On the Wado Radio Show. Yes, man, it is DJ Wado. It's the Wado Radio Show. It's more than music, it's ministry. And uh, we have the newest signee to Collision Records on the line with us, Keyshawn Furlow. Uh, what's up, good brother? What's good, man? What's good with you? Man, nothing, man. It's, it's, it's good to 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 eat meet you and uh man just hear your heart man and see what's going on with you bro yeah most definitely thank you for having me on the show man no problem man I, um i want to start with this question man this is this is this is one of the things that i've always wondered about you bro okay go ahead go most ahead. battle <laughs> rappers can't make good music yeah, yeah. and you make it's good the- music so I'm trying to figure out what you did conundrum. differently. <laughs> Yo, it's the Keyshawn conundrum. No, I think uh, <laughs> the <laughs> I think I, I I say this often because people ask this question more than you would think actually. But uh, I uh, I always say I'm an artist first, um, I, and I think if you ever got a chance to really really listen to my music, you would hear like I got versatility. Um, just from like I think good influences I think I really I'm I'm young I'm 23 so I really 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 like fell into hip-hop during like the Wayne era um, and Wayne was really one of those versatile artists that could get on a song with like a Gucci or you know uh, a T.I. and fit right in or you could put him with a crew of lyricists like Ye and Jay and he don't fit, he don't fit out of place either way, and so I think versatility is just one of those things I've always um, like prided myself on. But I know a strong part of my heart is really really for lyricism. Like I love high intellectual lyricisms. You know I'm a big fan of the the Lupes, the Qualies, the you know. So I'm I'm just a big fan of, of high lyricism. So I was an artist first, and then when I started uh, getting a chance to watch battle raps, I saw like these guys were like on another plane lyrically, and I just fell in love. I was like, these guys are geniuses. So it was just like a way to stretch a part of myself. So I would say like battle rap is in my entirety. It's just like a, a sure. tool in my arsenal, if you will. Well, uh, well, you answered the question how I thought you would, and it, it makes sense because most battle rappers, especially the ones that came up in in you know like the era that kind of preceded this like the the era with Jen and 106 and Park and all that a lot of those dudes yeah. was battle rappers first and then they tried to flip it and be artists you know what i mean and that's when it's 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 difficult cuz it is it's a whole different mentality and mindset that goes into battling versus making a record yeah, and I think uh, more people, more people than people would know, could cross over to battle rap like really easily, especially, especially in mainstream hip hop. You know, what I'm saying people like Abso, people like Lupe, maybe even like you know some Kendrick's Wale's people we know like that could easily battle rap. But even people in CHH, I think uh, people like you know Swoop, um, Swoop would make a great crossover because he's at heart a lyricist. Um, you know some of the the real lyrical cats you know even even cats who are like really grimy and just have a good foot in i know jay sun jay sun's a big battle rap fan and yeah. uh we we sent my battle one day that's a that's a whole another story but who won who won <laughs> no nah, we want to talk about oh it. so he beat you out. i'm not gonna <laughs> so that's how nah, like you beat not, you i'm tr- i'm trying not to put my og on the spot you know i come <laughs> from a place where you gotta respect the og so i'm not i'm not gonna say nothing so you but. served him is what you're saying we not going to say that. <laughs> Why you trying to get this out? You going to run a whole side article about the day Keyshawn, BJ son in the battle rap. That's not what we doing today. <laughs> oh, man. Nah. Well, uh, but yeah, it's a few people I think had a, had that ability. Well, Thizzle wanted to battle uh, uh, Saga one time. <laughs> we was we had, a sh- we had a... Thizzle had a show in Jersey and Saga was on it. And I came and... Um, Saga didn't really do it though. He had his he had his boy do it. He had he had his boy going back and forth with this. Yeah. So I don't know. The YGs go through. But I think yeah, Bizzle, yeah. I think It'd Bizzle be... would be a crazy battle rapper because yeah, most, yeah, most Bizzle, of his raps are battle Bizzle raps is... for real, for real. Yeah. 
and the people in his camp, like you know, I think Dayton used to have like some battle rap. Oh yeah, like history oh, yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Jay Monty could battle rap. Oh, he would kill Jay it. Monty I was thinking rap. him. He would kill it. Yeah, he already Jay killing Monty demons in all his records. So he, you know what I mean? He just <laughs> flipped the mentality, bro. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, no, it's good, man. It's good. So, um, I'm sure you get this question, but I want to know. You, Saga, um, Street Hymns, who's winning? Who's winning in a battle? Who's winning? I've actually never been asked this question before. But really? I would be, yeah, I've never been asked this question. So who's winning? But I'm going to say I'm very confident in myself. you very That's confident in you yourself. Learn. I'm very, very confident. So you're saying myself. blowout, three, three nothing, three love, boom. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. Most people will read my battles and. People say I've only lost one round. Mm. I don't have debatable battles. I usually show up in thirty people. Mm. Like I don't, I don't have <laughs> any hesitations to say I'm gonna come out the victor in any battle. I respect other people. I respect the crafts. Those are two talented guys. You know, Street is my my homie for sure, for sure. I know Saga less. I don't know him as well. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm very confident in myself. But you basically saying right. you would treat him tip. like 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 Steph Curry treated Chris Paul last year. Uh, yeah, I mean, he he might have to get the crossover on the baseline. He might have to, <laughs> he might have to get the baseline crossover. Man. Oh man, interesting. Man. Y'all gotta stop asking me these controversial questions. <laughs> I'm not gonna back down from them. I'm not gonna back down from them. I'm gonna tell you how I really feel. That's gonna get me in trouble. Oh man, you a good sport about it, man. It's all in good fun, man. It's all in good fun. Bro. Yeah, 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 it's all in good fun, man. Um. So man, how excited are you about your situation with Collision, bro? Um, I'm I'm more excited. Uh, you know, I've been signed to Collision for longer than people know. Um, I've been hearing rumblings. Yeah. Um. So I'm more excited about like. It's like I've been having to stay low key for months, so I'm just excited to have everything out on the table and get to plan in and get to work in and even this project voices i've i've had finished since like late november so just to uh finally get things into work everything like fully finished fully mixed fully mastered videos everything press release it's just good because i'm a i'm a worker um i've i've, I've just got a work ethic i've had a job since i was 13 so mm. um i got a wife i still work full time right now and i got two kids and I do like tons of stuff involved in my church, so work ethic is a part of me, like super strong. So I'm already working on my next project and stuff. So it's good to to get this music out, so I can say, "Yo, enjoy this music" and stuff like that. And then for me to really push this, because I really believe in voices, I really believe in the project. I think it's really dope, and uh, it's good to get people to hear it, and then be ready to plan and, and move on to the next thing. Because you know we evolve as artists and we go go to different places. Sure. How would you describe your artistry? Yeah, I think um, one of the <clears throat> one of the things I really try to push myself in um, is like learning to be myself. Um, and so, um, I think one of the things about me is that I really don't sound like anyone else. I hear a lot of people try to bring comparisons, and no one can really put me in any box. I'm very versatile. You know, people hear records like Hood Scholar and they are even like a golden, the the single. And some people make a quick rush judgment um, to say he's a trap. He's a trap rapper. But if you ever heard, got a chance to hear Keep an Open Mind, you got records like Four or Five in the Tray where it's like really lyrical. Or you got records like Whispers where it's all artistry. And so I think I'm just very versatile. Um, I, I do what I feel when the music is right. Um, I, I'm a big fan of a lot of different people So I'm the type of person that can listen to a Kendrick album And completely appreciate the lyricism And I'll turn on Future right after that And, <laughs> and mess up some commas So we, uh, That's the that's, opposite That's, what that's I think. polar opposite right there <laughs> Yeah, and that's what I think my music is like My music is like um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm from the South So I have a lot of that I, I, I'm very southern influence it's got a a good hold on my music i sound i think i'm a southern artist i sound like a southern artist um but at the same time i'm um, growing up my mom my mom was always a big fan of 
East Coast rappers. So we grew up listening a lot of Biggie, a lot of DMX, a lot of Busta Rhymes and stuff like that. So um, I'm a big fan of lyricism. I'm a really, really big fan of lyricism. So like I said, I don't I don't like to make comparisons of myself to artists, but I will like go on record saying like one of my biggest influences ever was always Wayne. And Wayne was that rapper that was from the South. He was very Southern, but he could easily pass because he had he came up with the East Coast flow. You know, um, from the Carter to on. So that's kind of how I see myself. Um, I'm very edgy. I like to experiment. Um, I don't play safe. I do things that um, I feel like are good. And I, I, I kind of do what what's for me. And um, yeah, that's kind of like how I am artistically. Interesting. So how would you describe yourself spiritually? How would I describe myself spiritually? Well, that's an interesting question. <laughs> um, um, rephrase that question. Like, what do you mean? How would I describe myself spiritually? Like, um, what faith tradition do I come from, or what? Nah, just, uh, just, just your general thoughts about your faith journey, bro. Okay, yeah, I think um, you know I'm a firm believer um, in Jesus and everything that Jesus has to offer. Um, humanity and um, I think I've I've been taking I've been on this journey since I was about 17 so um, I think um, I've grown a lot um, one of the things that um, I've had to learn is um, that Jesus accept, accepts me um, but I also feel like uh, I've had to lose a lot of things um, for my faith like if you don't have to give anything up and I don't, I don't think it's real for me. So, um, I'm very involved in in my local church. Um, very much have like a, a a solid support group as far as in my faith um, and in my Christianity. Um, I I I'm a, I graduated um, from Abilene Christian University. It's a private school out here in Texas. Uh, school kind of helped change my life and mold, I guess, a little bit of myself, but. I got a my BA in English, but my minor is in biblical text. So I have a good footing on like you know court theologies and understanding of doctrinal church histories and stuff like that. So um, I think intellectually, I have a good footing um, as it relates to the Christian faith. But I think my heart is really uh, geared toward um, being a missional person. I'm very missional minded. Um, one of my professors told me the greatest thing ever is like you can understand all the theologies in the world and like be the greatest scholar and there's going to be an old lady in your church who's been like serving God since she was 10 and mm -hmm. she's 60 years deep she's going to be a better Christian than you'll ever be and so that's kind of like where I keep in my mind that like I just want to be organically led by the spirit you know um, be disciplined but also you know uh, understand that Christ is, is meant to bring freedom and to share that with others um, through through any means possible. So that's just kind of where I am on my on my faith walk right now. Man, I was um I was listening to an artist and I won't say their name, but they were they were talking about how they feel like the Lord gives them songs, and they were just saying mm -hmm. how they were thankful that the Lord gave them another song. Like, do you feel like and and I'm asking this because you know I I I've I'll probably never be able to really experience this cuz I'm not a I'm not an artist in the same way that you guys are artists but do you feel like the Lord at times like gives you songs and gives you certain things you know that he wants you to say in your music and I ask because you were just talking about how how much you try to be spirit led Yeah I definitely think um the way I say it um I always describe it as like um, a zone So you know I feel mm -hmm. like Every good gift Comes from God You know what I'm saying So I definitely think My mind My talent My ability All comes from God um, And I think Creating music Is somewhere between Like a zone And a muscle um, Part of it is like Learning to Build your craft And learning to Like be good And be able to write Like whenever And be able to make music Whenever Similar to like um, I feel like it's similar To like um, any 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 service where you're doing something for a group of people is similar. So, I I talk to one of the elders in my church. Like we we meet pretty pretty uh, <clears throat> consistently, and um, he just warns me of like like it's similar to like preaching. You know what I'm saying? 
um, a lot of preachers, they come and they give a message and they know that it's good word and they know that like what they're saying is true and it's from the Bible. Um, and so they hope to, you know, feed the people a good word from God. Um, but some days, you know, it can feel like, oh, today's another sermon. Today's another, you know what I'm saying? And then some days you you can really feel like God moving through you. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, and I, I think that's that's how it is for me, you know. Um, some moments, some moments, um, it's just like, yo, this is a verse. I got needed a feature, so here you go. Here's a sixteen, and some stuff just feels a little bit more, you know, like, like spirit, spirit evoke. And I think uh, part of it is part of like being a good songwriter is because to me, I believe that each artist, like your music, should be your story. You know what I'm saying? Every person is different. Um, I, one of one of my mentors he used to always say the one story no one can tell better than you is your story. Mm. Uh, anybody can do a story about Abraham Lincoln. Anybody can do a story about Martin Luther King. But you're the only person who could tell your story like you do. And so for me, that's what my music is, and I feel like God is all through my story. God is all through my life. He, he's through the inner workings of the entirety of who I am. Um, so he shows up in my story as I as I try to communicate this story um, of my relationship with 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 God through the means of music, and that's what I feel like Scripture is, especially as we talk about Old Testament. I look at the Old Testament is this is God in the life of David. This is God in the life of Abraham. This is God in the life of Joshua. And my music is this is God in the life of Kishon. That makes sense. It's good, bro. What um what what happened when you turned seventeen? Because you said that's kind of where you felt like your <laughs> your journey yeah. started. It's like what so, what what what, so what, I got, what happened? That it was like okay, this is this yeah. Is so I knew here. I graduated high school early. Mm. Um, I graduated. So you're, so I, you're a pretty I smart moved. guy. Um, yeah, I am. I'm a hood scholar, <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> I graduated high school early. Um, I left the house at seventeen, haven't lived at home since. Um, and when I was part of part of my issue was, you know, I grew up in the Bible Belt, so um, I was always like, you know, around church culture, and I got like uncles and grandparents and all sorts of stuff, people that are pastors and like et cetera in my family. But I think when I got older, um, for me, I grew up in a lot of cultures that were like prosperity gospel. Mm. Um, and so I felt like a lot of people around me, their connection to God and their connection to Christianity was God doing something for them. Um, you need God to get out of debt. You need God to... Um, get you a new car to make sure you're healed and all of this and stuff like that and I'm like the first of my family um to like all of my cousins like almost none of my cousins even graduated high school you know what I'm saying wow um I like none of my like none of my my aunts or any of my family or any like that like go to college or do things like that and then you graduate so me, high school like, early yeah wow. and so for me it was like like y'all depend on a god figure for blessings or for some type of like um you know assistance and i'm like <laughs> i'm just gonna like <laughs> graduate school get a good job and just live my life um and so i think for me i was i was arrogant like um that's something i still struggle with today a posture of pride so um i'm naturally kind of an arrogant person and part of it deals with um being a smart kid growing up and so I, I felt no need for God and I just honestly at a certain point was nearly I would say like somewhere between agnostic agnosticism and atheism so um when I was in when I came to college and you probably asked why I went to a Christian university I originally was uh supposed to go to like uh the U of A at Fayetteville um because I was graduating and wanted to do engineering and they had this is University of Arkansas program. at Fayetteville yeah, University of Arkansas at Fayetteville, Razorbacks. That's where I originally wanted to go. And my mom, who, uh, 
didn't want her son to be a heathen her whole life. She mm. was like, I'm a, I'm a since she, my mom filled out the application for me. To, I'm very self-sufficient. Like I, my mom probably stopped checking whether or not I did my homework when I was in like the third grade. So I, I've just been very self-sufficient, very like I was her kid that she just never had to worry about, never had to ask questions. I do everything on my own. I register for everything on my own. That's just kind of me. And so um, my mom filled out my application to go to this school. She sent them <laughs> my test scores, like everything. <laughs> and, um, you know, they, they immediately, like, accepted me and was offered me scholarships. And I'm laughing at my mom. I'm like, Mom, I'm not going to go to this school. <laughs> Mama said, you finna so, get this gospel, though. Uh, yeah, that's how my mom. <laughs> <laughs> you finna get out, this Jesus, shout out, though, hey, bro. Shout outs to all the mamas who don't give up on their kids, man. Shout outs <laughs> to all the moms who don't give up on their kids. So, um, yeah, so I was in Dallas for like a basketball tournament or something. And um, she was like, uh, yo, ACU is like two hours down the way. Why don't you let me drive you down there? We can take a visit on campus. So I just kind of, you know, like I humored her. I was like, yeah, we'll go. And I just had like a good a good encounter with the campus. And they had a, a great physics program. Mm. Um, and they accepted me into their physics program and the like the undergraduate research that all of their all of their physics students get to do was like unrivaled by any other schools in the nation so i was just looking at all of this the perks and i was like academically um i was like i was like this is great you know i looked around it was fine girls everywhere campus looked good i was <laughs> like all right we can make this work we can make this work and so i went to that school and ended up talking to one of them fine girls there you and go she uh <laughs> and uh it would it would be the lady who would become my wife, but um, she she eventually like she was like inviting me to church and stuff, and I was like, nah, I'm cool on that. <laughs> and she finally convinced me to go to like one of their like life group meetings or whatever. But I was such like I was showing up so thugging, like I came in a wife beater. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, um, I showed up, hated it people was all in my face i felt uncomfortable uh, <laughs> and eventually went to like um got me to go on like a retreat or something like that and um the one of the sessions a preacher was just talking about father issues um and dealing with um having father a father that that's like not in the house yeah. and and wrestling with that and so it was something that i really related to and part of the thing he was saying like there are certain things that no matter how hard you work at, only God can fix. Mm. And it just kind of humbled me. And I, I just kind of like, I guess, broke down in that moment and realized um, that I couldn't do everything on my own and that I was insufficient as a person on myself. And like from then, from there on, like I've been I've been living out this faith, man. That's good, man. That's powerful, bro. That's I, <laughs> I'm still laughing, though. That your mom had you going to this Christian school. <laughs> this Christian school. <laughs> like, that's so trill, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. I love my mom, man. man you great. should, bro. That's powerful. Yeah. That's a powerful story, bro. How a very powerful story. Um, what can people expect from this project, man? This EP? Versatility. Um, a lot of different sounds. I keep emphasizing that. Um, I'd say... Um, of all the sounds, uh, Golden is the most, uh, like, that's as, that's as trap as it gets. That's as bangery as it gets. Um, I say most most tracks are more on the smooth, lyrical side. Um, you know, Anthony Cruz did a couple records. One Tail did a record. Um, and then there's a few records that even, um, they bang, but they're not traditional like trap records or like what you would think about a banger they're very weird or they're very quirky like i i got a track with aha it's very different like it's very different um in a very good way y'all got um, good chemistry so I though think, yeah 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 that's my homie man aha's the man and he did he what a lot of people don't really realize is he's a amazing producer he he did three beats on my on my record so um he 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 makes all of his own beats like if you ever heard free barabbas he did all the beats and mixed and mastered the project himself so wow that dude's a genius yeah that i didn't know i didn't know he had the production 
production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he produced Golden. So that shit, that should tell you where he's at. So nice. that's what's up. Um, we ever get another uh, Keyshawn Furlow Street Hymns project? Collab project? I don't know, man. Maybe somewhere down the line. We definitely got, you know, collab songs and stuff like that. Um, part of me is, you know, Street even himself has a has a, a bit of a greater individual catalog than I do. Um, so part of me is just working to, one, uh, get my individual catalog up and uh, give, like, fans a chance to really see my capability and my range. And part of it is I don't feel like I've fully peaked to where I am as an artist mm. like and become myself fully so mm. I, I just want to explore myself a little bit more and get to know myself a little bit more before I work on another collab project with anybody so um but yeah Street is the homie though you know what I'm saying that anytime we get together it's gonna be dangerous he's got a project that he's working on right now and we got a we got a record together on that that's crazy so um and he's on voices Street is on voices so it's uh it's a sure sure to see that to say that it's going um we're going to work together in the future some in some kind of way sure so i have to ask you this this is the elephant in the room question um elephant in the room man ele- i hate these questions Go elephant ahead. in the room <laughs> I, I i can't do this interview yeah. and not ask you this question it's one of those questions but go ahead obviously collisions had label changes recently and yeah. you know your new artist signed to the situation I think some of their long-term fans are like, what's going on? Chris Gray left, Swoop left. Now they have, Mm -hmm. you know, some newer artists, Corey Paul, yourself. I'm hearing there's another person as well. Um, Just (laughs) what's what's your whole vibe on all that? I keep my ear to the street, bro. That's funny. It's funny how people feel. Yeah. uh, (laughs) Yeah. You been over there talking to Mac, huh? Nah, um, nah. This ain't uh, uh, this ain't even that. <laughs> I actually, right, cool. actually, I don't even know if me and her have, have talked about that other part. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, 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 I say two things. Number you forget one, all the people that I know, um, brother. No, I you, don't. I don't. You I don't doubt my your sphere of my I don't. I absolutely <laughs> don't doubt your resources or your pool. Not, not even for a second. I don't. Um. <laughs> But I can't, I can't, well, one, um, I'll just say, I'll say two things. Like, most of these, most of the situations, like, around the hemisphere of collision don't really have anything to do with me. Sure. And I say that, I say that, like, not just dodging the question, but really, like, it really has nothing to do with me um, as it relates to, like, just timing and everything. Like, uh um i don't i don't know like one i i don't know Kristen at all you know what i'm saying Kristen, Kristen was gone but from collision before i ever even like had any kind of conversations like that with at um and i just recently got a chance to hang out with swoop and cray when they came through my city for a tour so um me and swoop you know swoop's a really cool guy we got to hang out for a little bit and chop it up um um and i say that to say like um Collision um, and its visions, um, i say like AT has the same heart as far as I know that he's always had to give fans great music, great artists with people who don't compromise on artistic integrity, but still have a heart for countering dangerous music in the world and being a counter um, to music that, that, that that's tearing down the hearts and the lives of the youth that listen to it. So, um, as far as like vision what people are looking for collision to sound like in the future one of the things i just want to say is and i'm gonna I'm have more of a say about this in the future but i think some people are being a bit like what i like to call like regionally racist um it's not regionally like racism, racist but it's, <laughs> yeah it's regionally racist and what i mean by that is people really really um are like prejudiced on the south and i think a lot of people are hearing like the fact that collision is all southern artists now like we're we're alex dre Corey, and Keyshawn, yeah. and people say oh they're all southern artists and i heard somebody say like oh they're gonna all sound like trap artists now and i'm like bro did you listen to bloodlines is that's bloodlines what i was gonna say that was album? definitely not a trap record like 
And I was like, I was like, but but you know, people, and even like even if it sounds southern, it's not necessarily a trap record. Mm -hmm. Cause like trap music, like if you don't understand the Atlanta music scene, and you don't understand if you don't listen to 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 the Gucci's and the underground like Boosies and all of the 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 ratchet music like that, you don't understand. You don't even understand the difference between trap music and then southern music like Dre. Dre makes very southern music. He's right. he's from Houston. His music sounds like Houston, but it's not trap because he's a lyricist. Dre's a lyricist. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, but even so even, I think, even all his all his records don't even sound southern either. Yeah, they don't. They don't. That's that's another thing. But um, and so I think people look at us and say we're trap artists, and I say the people who the only people who really do to me like really 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 trap music. Corey does trap music, and I do trap music. But trap music isn't everything I do. You know what I'm saying? Um, I I make I make hood scholars, but I make. You know, like if anybody got a chance to listen to Keep an Open Mind, one of the things people like who really listen to Keep an Open Mind will tell you is he's got so many different sounds in this project. And I think uh, that's that's the thing. I'm a very eclectic, versatile artist. Alex does like jazz, soulful, like blues type stuff. You know what I'm saying? And Dre has his own sound, his own. And then, you know, there's Corey. And so I think um, people look at us as all Southern artists, but I don't hear nobody saying things like, oh, Humble Beast or Dream, uh, King's Dream. They're all West Coast artists or anything like that. Like nobody has complaints about that because people see us in the South and they discriminate and they prejudice and they don't look at they won't qualify our lyricism they won't qualify our the variations of sounds in the south they basically look at it as like lesser or ignorant and they downplay the artistry or the ability that we have because a lot of people want to ride the wave they want to take things from the south they want to take pieces of our culture uh, and without being able to fully appreciate the mm. fullness of who we are in the South. And so that's my thing. That's the only thing I have to say, like going forth um, about collision sonically. I feel like there's still variation. It is a Southern label. I feel like we are all Southern artists right now. That doesn't mean that's what it's always going to be. And that's the only people who are going to always ever be on the label. Um, but also, like I'll say, like there's like... And not not saying like anything about the position of anybody on the label, but there's like old collision and new collision. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like I'm the start of something like new because it's kind of hard to escape. Yeah. The we live as kings yeah. like coming together in as a unit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like like I love Alex. Alex is my dog though, bro. We like. We we spend so much time together, and he's my homie, like for sure, for sure. And Dre is like the OG, and Corey, I lo I love those cats, but you know, it's I don't feel like I'm one of them because we come in at different times. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I think people are looking at Collision like this is the new we live as kings, which is not like it's not the new we live as kings. Um, it's just the new Collision. You know what I'm saying? So I think when people start. Stop trying to compare it to old collision and stop trying to compare it to what it was. You'll begin to appreciate like all of the versatility and all of the the diversity that it has right now. Yeah, I, you know, I I felt like um, you know, I I say this, bro. I think for me, Swoop was kind of the original collision artist, you know, and yeah, and Chris was like, you know, just this phenomenal singer, this phenomenal talent. That really, uh, I think, with the rest of them, totally created this, this, uh, this different sound that's kind of hard to replicate. You know, with three, three really dope rappers, and then you got this guy that can sing and rap. You know, like really well at both. Yeah. You know, and so, yeah, I think for for some people who like really latched on to that, it's like, well, man, it's not so much that they don't they're not necessarily maybe excited about the new artist that's on the label but it's just like man we're not going to get that again and that was a special moment you know what i mean i think that's that's what's you know some you know that i think that's the feeling yeah. that some people got like i've gotten emails people have asked me my opinion about that and i think that's kind of yeah, a general general vibe from some of them and I think one of the things people got to realize is 
But one thing is like I'm still like very much like a, a kid. Like I I was there when when Swoop first got signed to Collision, sure. like listening to Collision Records. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I've been listening to Swoop since Spring Fling. Yep. Um when Spring Fling first came out, I had that John. So I have I I'm a I'm one of the biggest swoop friends around. So he was, he was rapping around, projects. R- rapping along the walking and all that, huh? <laughs> I know I know all his projects bar for bar. Wow. So um so I'm a big swoop fan. I think he's an amazing rapper. I'm a big Christian Gray fan. I think he's an amazing talent. School of Roses to me is one of the greatest projects CHH has ever seen. That's mm-hmm. my personal opinion. Um and so I I do think these guys are amazing talents. They are they are great um they were they created this great balance and this great chemistry you even had like the chance where collision got to split and do a northern lights tour versus a southern lights tour sure um which is a really cool thing to be able to do um it's an amazing thing to be able to do now y'all got like southern Um, Lights squared though (laughs) yeah and i and i think i think i don't even know if i would say that i think it's just gonna look completely different sure um because i also think nobody on collision um has ever ran in the lane that i'm in Mm. uh as far as artistically Mm. everyone everyone makes their kind of uh their kind of music and everyone did great like i love like i love swoots music I, i i love Kristen's, i love you know dre's and alex's but i don't think um any of them have ever like made quality um like they don't make music for the mainstream let's say let's say that like they don't make mainstream banger hit records um and i think like that's a new component like thrown into the mix now like now like i'm i'm a guy people get on hooks i'm the guy i'm a guy people like i i can i can do like big singles i can do like all kinds of things and i'm also (laughs) i'm also very much so a lyricist like I, I don't I don't know if I gotta remind people like I battle rap like I'm a lyricist so <laughs> like <laughs> like I understand I I'm a swoop fan I I and I and I I appreciate the high levels of his lyricism but I am a lyricist my my dude like I, I'm I think uh, and so I think like I keep saying like. I don't think I think people are looking at me and say, "Oh, he's another Southern guy." But I think there's even a, a variation of who I am versus who like a, a Corey or Alex or Dre is. Like we're all we're all different, and I think if we got on the track, um, the chemistry, what it would look like, would be completely different. And I think people may have taken some like some judgments based off maybe they saw Hood Scholar Golden and Crazy, and I'm like, listen to my projects, and you'll see like. It gets very, very lyrical, very quick, um, and I don't, I don't think, I like, I don't doubt my lyricism up against anybody. Like, I will get on a track with anybody and feel perfectly confident in my, in my verse and my lyricism. I don't think there's anybody who can outrap me on a song. Mm. Anybody, anybody in the world. I might have to put you to the test, brother. Put me to the test. I don't feel like there's anybody who can outrap me. Oh no! Now, if you want to talk about people who got like swag and make great songs no, and great no, records, no, no. But if we talking, if we talking bar for bar on the verse, getting with the grimy lyricism, dog, I'm confident, dog. I'm I'm confident. Like I'm very very confident in my ability. I love it. I love the confidence, bro. I love it. So yeah, so that's that's just how I feel. So I told Swoop, I told Swoop, I said, I'm gonna get you on the track and body you. I told, I told him that straight up. <laughs> you can ask him. What'd I said, say? dog, I'm say? gonna get what you on the, the track and drag you. He said, I've never. He's like, he said, I've never gotten aid in my life on on the track. <laughs> he's like, so this would be a first. And I was like, and I'm such a fan, so I feel like it's my right to do this to you. So, <laughs> but I like, there's nobody like. If you go here, like, listen to some of my lyrical pieces, I haven't even begun to really show people. Like, if you go back, if you really talk about the collab project with me and Street, like, I can go down and break down, like, verses for you. And people don't even get the triple entendres, the the multi-schemes that are flowing through that whole project, Me, like, me and Street had. So, like, lyrically, like, lyrically, I don't, I don't feel... 
I don't feel any like any like heat or any like I'm f- afraid of anyone. But I feel like people will disqualify because I'm Southern. It's just like same it's same thing like people tried to do do with Crit when he first came out. And they denied his lyricism, and they just said, "Oh, he's just another Southern artist." But you and really, people you, now got to. You really think huh? people is on that Southern artist tip like that in, in 2016? Absolutely. I'm gonna tell you this, and no disrespect, do, my home. I'm very, very, very good friends with my homies, uh, the Dream Junkies. Good friends. Just did a show with them out in uh, Oceanside a few weeks ago. So you saying you telling me Ruslan doesn't respect you like that? No, Ruslan respects me. Oh, he that's not what I'm you, saying. Bro. I was just all. with him. He was. He yeah, loves yeah, you, bro. yeah. Absolutely, a- absolutely. Me for sure, for sure. But what I'm not even talking about them. Actually, um, what I'm saying, like talking with other people on the West Coast, like talking to like people on the side, like people setting up lights and stuff like that. We're just having conversations about hip hop and just talking about like artists in the industry and just how they label artists. And how they see other artists and stuff like that. Like like I told you, when we have conversations about Crit or when we have conversations about these other other artists, I see like you guys don't respect these southern artists. And it's not me. Like, you know, Ruslan Ruslan ain't showed me nothing but love ever. You know what I'm saying? Those cats love me and I think they appreciate even like other people. But I think the general scope and vision of people who don't come from the South um is that they limit the artistry. Um, that southern rappers provide mm. Th- that's how i feel and it's not it's it's not um like it's 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 there are reasons for it because i think us in the south we have the most flexibility you know what i'm saying yep it's it's like uh it's like one of the people i feel like has great um flexibility um, or like versatility is Andy. I, I I love the fact that Andy can really, really rap or KB. You know what I'm saying? Two people who can really, really rap, who I feel like can really rap and really make bangers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think that kind of, huh? Yeah. But see, this is my thing. And this is no slight to KB. I think I think Andy really has a lot of versatility because it's not even just he can really rap and he can make bangers. It's the types of records that he can make. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what and I'm saying? I, like that's Andy, why I mentioned Andy like first. Andy could do I mentioned a boom Andy bap first. record and it is sound yeah. dope. Yeah. A trap, absolutely. You know, like I don't know if I could throw I, KB on a 90 BPM boom bap record. Maybe. I don't know. But he probably here's what hear I'll this, say, he's though, like, wait, oh, you doubt me, son. I know him. But <laughs> here's here's the thing though, like when people forget when who is KB came out, KB was really rapping, dog. Sure. Like <laughs> sure. he was really, really rapping. You want to talk about like lyricism, metaphors, punchlines, cadences, schemes. Like he came in with that. Like I, I I remember coming in and listening to KB and say, Oh wow, like this guy is definitely talented. And yeah, I but think what I'm he's say, like, well, but what? But this is what I'm saying though. Like, he's an amazing rapper, but yeah, I think there's how should I say it, bro? It's like the speeds of the track, the types of songs, and how natural it yeah, sounds. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Like, I, I, I'll grant you that. Like, I've never heard him. Like, I don't, I don't. First of all, I don't know either of them. Um, so I, I, I would have less knowledge on their range and their capability. Yeah. Um, and he might be able um, to do it. We've just never heard it. That's what it is. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Um, never heard it. Never heard it. But all of that to say that I think I am an artist with, with, I pride myself in versatility like that. Like on, on keeping open mind, 45, four, four, five in a tray is pretty much, it, it is it is 90, 90 BPM and it is it sounds like yeah. something that could that could almost pass for like boom bat rap. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Well, you it's 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 obvious just from talking to you in this interview that you really put a premium on your versatility. Like that's very important to you and something that you've um, and there's nothing wrong with it, but it's something that you've obviously put a lot into like man i want to be like you like draymond green bro 
It's like you're saying, yeah. I'd rather be, instead of being Steph Curry, I want to be Draymond Green. I want to be able to do it all. I want to be able to hit the three, go on the block, assist, pick and roll, defense, all that. And I don't think it's necessarily that I'm saying, like, I want to be able to do all of that or or that I even try. I think it just flows out of who I am naturally. Sure. sure. Um, because that's the thing I keep telling. That's kind of like that the heart of Hood Scholar. Like, I'm really from, like, the hood in Little Rock. That's where I grew <laughs> up. Like, I grew up. Like, the dope the dope house is right on the corner of my block. Like, no snitching. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. but that's that's right there. And, uh, like like, I got cousins and strong like family members like like just uncles like all of that like like loked out like in games banging and all of that stuff and i i have all of that parts of me that like that are that culture but i'm the kid who finished high school and Yo, i'm the kid who and you're huh you're 23 right 23 i'm 23 yeah yo i don't do you remember banging in little rock the special yeah, I I know a lot of those dudes from, <laughs> from that video. I know a lot of those dudes. Like dudes, the the dude, the dude, uh, the dude Crip Mo who came and founded the Crip sect in Little Rock works with my mom. Like wow. I know, like <laughs> I know a lot of those cats. So it's like, um, it's like uh, that's that's real for me. But I am the kid who went to high school, finished high school, graduated with honors, and graduated college college with honors. Got my degree, and so I, I'm a I'm an intellectual cat who can have a conversation with you about Young Jeezy or Kendrick Lamar, like either way it go. And I think um, that's just who I am, personality wise. Sure, um, sure. it's who I am, um, and so I I think I think that's that's when I that's who i am as as a person and so i i hate the fact that we i understand that in order to survive we have to categor categorically create labels to navigate through life mm. like creating labels and creating structures help us to navigate through life um it's just a reality that's like helpful it's 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 a mechanism that we use it's a survival mechanism um but for me it's like when you when you start creating those labels, it becomes very dangerous because that's the issue that we have with people stereotyping African Americans, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, and so that's the thing for me. It's just like, yes, I'm a Southern artist. Yes, I do trap music, but I'm just like, I want to be known like upfront, like I'm the exception. Like I'm, I can do a lot of different things. Nice. That's good, man. Well, Keyshawn, man, this is this has been uh, this has been fun. It's been informative, man, and. Um, excited about your project bro and, and your career dude thank you i just thankful for the opportunity to be able to talk on the show <laughs> man, absolutely. with the way <laughs> man we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll we'll have to link up link up one of these days bro most definitely yeah man. where you where you stay jersey you stay out in new jersey my wife's from new jersey yeah i'm 20 minutes from new york city i'm in newark yeah i'm uh my wife's from like Trenton area, Borden Town. So. Trenton, so she's Central I, Jersey. That's her too down there. Yeah, though. Central Jersey. She's huh? from Trenton. No, she's from Trenton area. Oh, my, okay. wife's from the <laughs> I was about to my, my my wife's from the suburbs. She grew up uh, in Borden Town, which is like 15 minutes away from Trenton. Oh yeah, she that's nice. High school. That's nice. She went to high school in Princeton, so she. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. Um, she's a different different kind of girl but <laughs> opposites the track man y'all yeah. probably got good balance man yeah yeah well that's good man well bro appreciate you man and uh we'll be on the lookout for your stuff bro cool thank you on the way to radio show on the way to radio on the way to radio show where it's much more music it's ministry